Chris Waller joins us with another weekly update on the stable. Big day last Saturday, Chris. Uh, another Group 1 in Brisbane, Durban Cup with beaten up and, and obviously a good day in Melbourne with a winner down there. It was Liam and Cornell at the Durban Cup and Forteller running second. Uh, it was a good run. He's been a model of consistency. Hasn't had much luck in his last two runs but he certainly won plenty of prize money and looks good for the spring and it was great to see beaten up. Uh, breakthrough for his first Australian win. He looks like a horse that could uh, step up to the next grade during the spring, which I think uh, we'll see him be competitive in lead-ups to the Cox Plate and, and Caulfield Cup. Whether we get that far is another story, but certainly a good chance in those lead-up races. And it was good to see Fulger break through for a, a win in Australia, over 1,700 metres, backing up from the week before at Flemington. Stable down there is going good and it's just proving that our system that we've got in place is good and um, the satellite stable doesn't seem to be putting any strain on our, on our stable in Sydney. Obviously some uh, some other big news to come out of the stable this week, announcing Dan Lee's retirement at, at nine years old. Yeah, that um, hasn't really sunk in yet I guess. Um, he's been in the stable for so long since he was a three year old with us and throughout those years mainly running in Group 1 races and being very consistent and just an amazing horse to work with and very fortunate to be able to train him and all our staff feel the same. It's um, given us plenty of great memories. And obviously the two days at Scone, uh, no winners for the stable but they were all successful in, in earning prize money. Uh, what are your thoughts on the two day carnival and how it's progressed over the last couple of years? I think it's a great carnival. It's a little bit harder for us with a big team getting there and and um, getting settled in. If we had to target the race meeting with a big number, I'd probably go up there and stay a few days before the race next time. But fortunately, there's still plenty of good prize money in Sydney, either side of the carnival. Um, tracks are firm up there. Due to a lot of wind they had through the week, that didn't really suit a few of our horses. But as you say, a lot of placings and they're all around the mark. Right, looking ahead, 22 runners on Saturday uh, across or well, 23 runners across four destinations. We'll start off with Sydney. Uh, two three-year-olds, Oompa Loompa, obviously an impressive winner two weeks ago at Rose Hill and an eight straight for his second up run over 1,400. Eight straight was a very good two-year-old, just lost his way a little and um, it's not unusual for a three-year-old to do that. And I wouldn't say he's, he's jumping out of his skin yet and I'd say he's still another preparation away. Oompa Loompa, he's been a model of consistency. We've just placed him carefully through the midweek races, done a good job and starting to impose a very good winning strike rate. So he certainly looks a great chance on Saturday. Of the other three year olds in on the day, the 2000 metre race, Richie's Bickies and, and Blowing Your Mind. Richie's Bickies obviously a winner at Rose Hill uh, two weeks ago and, and Blowing Your Mind also a winner, but at, at Kembla Grange. Both last start winners, as you say, which is a great thing for three year olds. They'll suit the 2,000 metre distance, whether the uh, wet track is a worry to them is yet to be seen. Uh, obviously we're looking at a wet weekend and hopefully it's not a heavy track because we can certainly get some mixed results on those tracks. Right, the feature race of the day in Sydney is the, the Mikel Cup. Permit lumped with another big weight again on Saturday, but it strikes an easier race than what he's been facing. A bit less depth in the race, the horse is going good. and. Um, yeah, he deserves to be winning a race this preparation. He hasn't been far away in some, in some good fields. And hopefully, uh, for his sake on Saturday, could be a winning return. A good team of fillies and mares, also over the 1400. Titbit uh, obviously trialled since her last run, and, and also the three year old Gullible and Midnight Minx. Yeah, I thought Titbit's first up run was excellent. She'll appreciate the 1400. Midnight Minx, we're going to leave on Saturday. I think she'd be best placed next week over 1300 at Rose Hill. And Gullible, she's a um, promising filly. She's taking on the older mares. If her last start was good, where we brought her back in distances to try and teach her to settle a little bit better. And she ran home nicely for fourth against the Colts. Uh, the open handicap over 1,100. She's clean, obviously, uh, it capped off last preparation with a, with a win in stakes grade. And you've got Tromso there, first up from an awkward draw. Tromso, doubtful on a heavy track. It's better than a heavy track, he'll certainly run and, and run well. She's clean. She's been a very good filly, or mare, and as you say, won a listed race last start before going for a spell, so she's come back well. We're getting her ready for the Tattersall's Tiara at her third up run in Brisbane, a group one race. 
Okay, and uh, rounding out the day in Sydney, a strong team of four runners there. Thumbtacks uh, with the big weight, obviously, second up. His first up run was good. was a good run. He got home really well. Wet track shouldn't worry him if it is a heavy track on Saturday. Second up over 1,400. I think there's a lot, of, lot to like about the placement of this horse. And he's another one heading up to Brisbane for Stradbroke Day. He's a mile race on the 8th of June for him. Balavan, he's third up, uh, obviously been, been competitive in his first two runs. Yep, second last start, um, was a very good run and I'd expect him to be at his peak fitness for Saturday. 1400 metres is a bit of an unknown, uh, but expect him to run well. Cope T, a good first up run. It was, and he loves the wet tracks and the distance, so he should be better for that first up run where he had a good blow. And it's a lovely race for him on Saturday. Obviously, altered boy, uh, his first emergency, but he'd be suited if he gets a start by the wet track. Yep, that's all he needs, I think. Um, he, he won a race first up in the preparation on a similar track, likes Randwick. Uh, should be very fit now and, and hopefully runs well, running against conditions to suit. Looking ahead to the obviously strong hand in Brisbane, uh, we'll start off with the Glen Logan Park Stakes, Aaron Ace. He elected to take it to the Phillies and Mares race, obviously at Group 3 level, and uh, opposing the Doom in 10,000. Yeah, the, um, the plan is for her is to try and win a Group 1. Now, the Stradbroke is a race that we definitely want to run in, obviously for prize money and also for the Group 1 status, so that'll be a second run up there. And then probably the easier of the options, three options, if we were to run the Derma 10,000 this week, would be the Tattersall's Tiara. So we purposely left the Derma 10,000 to try and give her a slightly easier run, which will lead into the Stradbroke with the Tats Tiara. And she's going great. Obviously, a model of consistency is her form. And worked very well, freshened up nicely, and had a trial just to keep her up to the mark. Uh, two nice cults in the size produce. Uh, Zoo Star, he's unbeaten two from two now. And, and Villanova was unlucky not to, not to have won last start also up in Brisbane in the Champagne. Yeah, as you say, Liam, both nice horses. And um, <coughs> Villanova, his distance of, well, the distance of 1350 will really suit him a lot better than the 1200 first up, and he's worked very well through the week. And Zoo Star heads up there, stepping up in distance for the first time, but as you say, very nice colt, and I'd expect him to run well. Both good chances, awkward draws, uh, you don't often need a little bit of luck with Doom, but that's the only query. Uh, the Grand Prix, obviously on a path towards the derby of uh, Hawkesburg there over the 2200 metres. He was an impressive winner last start. He was. Uh, bounced back after a failure in his last run in Sydney, so that was good to see. Meets a similar field, probably with a little bit more depth on Saturday. Uh, distance won't worry him. He's going great. Carlton Mid, Doombin 10,000, Rangy Rang Do, obviously uh, a big stalwart for the stable. Taking his second up run there, obviously off a good run in the all-age stakes. It was a good first up run and that gave me the confidence to take him to this race, Liam. I just think the barrier draw is going to make it very hard. We went forward last start and it was a bit soft in the finish, obviously in a very good race. I don't want to do the same to him again. I'd like to ride him quiet and hopefully have the last crack at him. But obviously around Doom and that's not easy in a big field. There will be plenty of pace on and we'll just hope we can charge home late. Okay, and you, two runners in the Premier's Cup, the last race in Brisbane. You've, you've scratched Moriarty early in preference, obviously, for another race somewhere down the line. But Studio, he was a, he was a winner last start at the Gold Coast and steps up in grade. Probably. Yeah, steps up in grade, which will be hard, but he deserves his chance at this, at this level. I think he, he'll definitely get there in six months' time, but whether he's ready to go to that next step just now will remain to be seen on Saturday. But the horse has worked well. As you say, he's in winning form. The other horse, Moriarty, I just thought with his big weight and a very wide draw, it would be better going to the Eagle Farm Cup next Saturday. It's a Group 2 weight for age race, which I think he'd be well placed in. Obviously capping off this morning's video, we'll go to Melbourne. Two runners down there, forever crazy uh, over the mile in Philly's grade, and, and uh, Cooper Claim goes down for the, for the 20, 380 metre race. Forever crazy, drawn poorly. She's another one that'll go back and attack the line. Her two runs down there have been good. Looking to peak on Saturday over the right distance. Just needs that little bit of luck from the gate. And uh, Cope McLean he has his first run in Melbourne, coming off some good Sydney form, winning a $100,000 race last start. The distance is a query for him. As you say, 2380. 
it's probably stretching him out a little bit. But we'll see how he goes. He's certainly in great form. Now obviously after last week's uh, appeal out there for sponsors, we were inundated with emails and phone calls of people wanting to get on board. I think it took me all day Thursday and Friday to, to get through all the uh, the queries we had. But we've come up with a sponsor for this week, obviously on a, after negotiating a contract with them, and that's uh, you'll enlighten us on their details, Chris. Yes, this week's uh, segment's been sponsored by Isocom. It's a antiseptic range sold at Woolworths, uh, also owned by one of our owners, Mr Chris Musgrave. Oompa Loompa fame, and just reading it, it's quite a versatile product then. It is um, firstly for external use only, and it uh, could be a body rub, a freshener, a cleanser, an antiseptic, plus we actually do use it on the horse's legs to keep it nice and cool through the summer months, and that is a fact. So go to Woolworths, buy your ice cold, it's a very good product. And we'll leave the body rub out of it. Thanks Chris.